The Turkish rug stitch is basically shag carpeting for your embroidery project. It is also known as the turkey stitch or the turkey work stitch. We will actually be starting on the face of our embroidery piece. In this scenario, you will not want to use an anchor knot at the end of your floss. Instead, we will be relying upon the tension to keep the Turkish rug stitches in place. Begin by pulling your needle through the face of the cloth until you have a tail of thread. Make sure you are inserting your needle at the middle of your first stitch. Then move left and bring the needle back up through the cloth. Pull your thread over to the right and reinsert. However, before you complete a simple stitch completely, bring the needle back up through the tail hole to create a second tail. This second tail will be the starter for our next stitch of the rug. To start the next stitch of the Turkish rug, reinsert at the center of the second stitch. I like to use my thumb to keep the tail down as I'm working so that it doesn't get mixed up with the simple stitches. Pull the needle down until you create a loop. Do not pull the loop into a stitch. Instead, leave it slack and bring your needle back up through the end point of the previous stitch. Then bring your needle over just as you did before and make a simple stitch. If you have more to go, remember to create that second tail before pulling the simple stitch into place. Again, you will want to insert your needle at the center of your stitch, come up through the end point of the previous stitch, create the tail, pull the simple stitch into place, and continue until you end your row. Once we have reached the end of the row, go ahead and snip the tail. Snip the loops to create a series of tails. If you like, you may proceed to the next step, fluffing. Go ahead and tease the thread so that it is standing up. Then, using your scissors, trim the thread down to the length of fluff you desire. Personally, I trim small bits at a time, fluffing the thread until I get the shape and consistency that I like. It is my personal preference to repeat the loop making steps until I have filled my shape. To start your next row, move back to the left of your shape and work your way right, repeating the same steps as before. To fill the shape, I prefer starting at the bottom left and work my way right and up until filled. This helps me to stay organized, keep my lines straight, and avoid unnecessary knotting. As I'm working on a specific row, I find it useful to make a mental note of how many small stitches I think it will take to fill in that line. Doing so aids me in keeping track of how large I make my stitches. I try to keep my stitches around the same size to ensure an even distribution of fluff.